everyone, welcome back. We're in chapter 5, which is one of my favorite chapters because we get into another incredibly powerful equation. Now, we've talked about conservation energy, where energy doesn't go anywhere, it always goes from one form to another. Now we're going to talk about conservation of mass, which simply says that your mass doesn't disappear, it has to go somewhere. That can mean your density increases, it can mean a lot of things. So, let's jump right into it. Okay, first off, conservation of mass, that's the equation, that's what the entire chapter is about. Now, it simply says that, like energy, mass cannot be created or destroyed during a process. Unless we go nuclear, then it can, but that's beside the point we're not a nuclear engineer. If you are a nuclear engineer, well, you know what to do. Now, if we have a closed system, that means the mass of the system is going to remain constant because I don't have any mass coming into the system. My, the mass of my system can change, it just has to have, come from somewhere. And the last thing we're going to be talking about here is control volumes. So, if I don't have a closed system, well, I'm going to have a control volume. So I might have, let's just say, a tube, and I have a flow going through it. I can then set up a particular volume that I'm looking at. And if it's steady state, then the mass of that control volume will be a constant. Okay. Now, a place where you might not think about this too much is that mass is conserved even during chemical reactions. So if you're a chemistry major, this one's for you. So if I have 2 kilograms of hydrogen and I add together 16 kilograms of oxygen, they will release some heat. When they do that, they will form H2O. Now, um, if you are a big Einstein fan, you might know that E equals mc squared. And you might be thinking, well, wait a second. Energy went out from this equation. So wouldn't that mean that my mass would go down? And the answer to that is, well... Yes, yes. Technically, during a chemical reaction, you might have some really, really small change in mass. But it's so small that we're just going to go ahead and say, eh, it pretty much is zero. It pretty much is zero. Um, like for other examples here, if I have a car, a thousand kilogram car, and it's traveling at 20 meters per second, it would only increase in mass by a few picograms due to kinetic energy gain. Yes, you do sort of get heavier as you go faster. There's more to it than that. Technically, your inertia is what's increasing, not your mass. But that's a talk for a nuclear physics class and not for ours. So big thing here is just remember that for all intents and purposes, and every single system we're going to run into, my mass is going to be a constant if I have either a steady state system or if I have a closed system. Okay. So let's use this in a bit more detail now. So... Let's say I have a bathtub right here. You've all seen a bathtub at some point in your life, or a shower at the very least. And if I was measuring stuff, well, I could see how much mass was going in. I could measure it. I could, if I had a strange drain, or like my house, I can just go underneath and cut a pipe, I could measure how much mass was going out of it. And the amount of mass in my system, so inside of my bathtub, would change based on the difference between these two. And 50 minus 30 is equal to 20. So it's a very simple note keeping. It's just your mass in minus your mass out is going to be equal to your change of mass within your control volume. Now, control volume is simply saying I don't have to have a system that has walls on every side. I can just choose an arbitrary area and figure out the, uh, the mass from that. Okay. So here's it written out a little bit more fancy rather than just a bunch of words. So right here we have our just regular form. We're looking for just masses themselves. But a lot of times if we have a steady state system, we're going to be dealing with mass flow rates. So in that case, I would have the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate out is equal to the change in mass of my control volume with time. How quickly is that mass in my control volume changing with time? And these are referred to as mass balance, and it works for any control volume undergoing any kind of process. It just is always, always going to work. Because no matter what you do, the mass can't disappear. It has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. So we'll stop here next with this one, and we'll continue next time. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.